Welcome back uh, COE202 students. In this video, I will talk about design by contraction. Okay, so the first question that comes to our mind is what is design by contraction? Uh, it is a technique for simplifying the logic. Now, sometimes you have a circuit in which some of its inputs, not all of them, some of its inputs are constants, are zeros and ones. So if some of the inputs are zeros and ones, you can use these zeros and ones to simplify the logic. And yet you can eliminate some of the logic gates in the circuit. So I will demonstrate this uh, by showing an example. And this example will be uh, designing an incrementer. Okay, so let us take a look at this example, which is shown in the next slide. So suppose I would like to design an incrementer. So how do I design an incrementer? An incrementer is a circuit that takes its input. It has one input, which is A, and it outputs the sum, which is A plus one. So let me just highlight this with a pen. Okay, so you can see here that the sum is equal to A plus one. So that's by definition is an incrementer. So there is one input A, and the output is S, which is the sum, and the sum is equal to the input A plus 1. Now you can think about the incrementer as a special case of an adder. So what you can do is you can use an adder that adds two numbers, A plus B, and you can make B equal to 0. You can see that here B is equal to 0. But how do you add the 1? You can use the input carry, which is C0. Let me just put C0 here. You can actually have C0 is equal to 1, as shown in this slide. So what we have here is that we have a circuit that can add two numbers, A and B. This is my circuit. This is my adder. It can add any two numbers, A and B, but I fixed the input B, I made it zero. You can see the zero inputs for B. And what I did is I have made C zero is equal to one so that we can increment A by one. Now, looking at this circuit, you can see that some inputs are zeros and there is one input here, which is equal to one, which is C zero. If you look at this gate, this one here, this AND gate, now this AND gate is ending A0 with 0. And when I end A0 with 0, the output will be 0. It will always be 0, regardless of the input A0. So do we need this gate? The answer is no. There is no need for this gate. You can say the same thing about this AND gate here. Okay, its output is also zero, and so on. So there are four AND gates, which are uh, highlighted here in X, that are not needed, okay, because their outputs are zeros. So why do we need these gates? We can just simply remove them. And the reason why their outputs are zeros is that because B is zero. How about this XOR gate? This XOR gate, which is shown here, this XOR gate, what's the output of this XOR gate? Now, this XOR is going to XOR A0 with 0. So when you XOR A0 with 0, what do you get? You get A0, right? So if you get A0, which is the output of this XOR gate, if it's always A0, why do I need XOR gate? I can simply I can simply discard this XOR gate. There is no need for this XOR gate. The same thing can be said about this XOR gate. Its output is always A1 and so on. In fact, there are four XOR gates that we can eliminate. So these four XOR gates can be eliminated because their output is depends on the input A0 only, and therefore their output is known. So why do I need a gate to calculate the output? So since we have one of the inputs of so these XOR gates is always zero, 
and the output is known, there is no need for these XOR gates. So we can just simply remove them. Now, how about this input C0, which is equal to 1? Look at this AND gate. Okay, this AND gate, which is shown here. What's the output of this AND gate? Now, this AND gate is ending A0 with 1. And if you end A0 with 1, the output is always A0. And then if you OR A0 with 0, the output is also A0. So why do I need these gates? I can simply remove them. I know that the output is always A0. I can simply connect a wire from the input A0 to the output of this OR gate. There is no need for all of these gates. The same thing can be said about this OR gate, which is shown here, right? This OR gate. Now, since we are ORing with zero, then the output does not depend. It, it, the output of this OR gate is simply the output of this AND gate. So if we have the output of this AND gate is C2, Sorry about that. So if the output here is actually whatever is the output is actually, let us say the output here is some value, then the output of the OR gate is the same. Okay, it's actually C2. So we don't really need this OR gate. Similarly, we don't need these OR gates, this one and this one. So I can simply remove these OR gates because we are ORing with zero. So we can simply propagate the value from the input to the output, and we don't really need the OR gates. Finally, let us take a look at this XOR gate, this one which is here that produces the output as zero. Now, this XOR gate is going to XOR A0 with one. What do you get when you XOR A0 with one? You get the output here is equal to a0 prime, right? Because when you XOR with 1, when you XOR A0 with 1, you get the output as the complement of A0, which is A0 prime. So do I need XOR gate to produce this output? In fact, I only need an inverter. So for this reason, this gate can also be simplified. We cannot eliminate it completely, but we can simplify it to become an inverter. So this next slide here, okay, so let us move on. So this slide shows a simplified incremental circuit. Notice that how we have simplified the circuit after eliminating many gates. Notice that we only need an inverter that will produce the output as zero. So as zero is simply equal to a zero prime. So um, we, have, we have also simplified all the remaining outputs for S1, S2, and S3. Notice that this is a half adder here. This is a half adder consisting of XOR gate and an AND gate. We have another half adder and a third half adder. So this is my incrementer. It has this symbol. The input is A that consists of four bits, A3 down to zero. The output is S, which is equal to A plus one. So basically, S is equal to A plus one. We are just actually incrementing A by one. And there is a carry here, which is C4. This is my final output carry. So this is how we can design and incrementer and this is called design by contraction thank you very for watching this video the next topic will be about signed numbers it will be covered in another video